Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. I appreciate it, and I'm sure, certainly my family does as well. This, uh, this week, this Shabbat, is a special Shabbat that, although not the first Shabbat of the year officially, because that was right after Rosh Hashanah, but it is Shabbat Bereshit. It is uh, Shabbat, the first parasha. We've renewed, again, the cycle of the Torah, and we are starting afresh from the beginning of the Torah, the first parasha, Shabbat Bereshit, Shabbat of creation. It's unfortunate that often we don't get to dwell and discuss the topics of this week's parasha, often because we don't have much time. Yom Tov finished Tuesday night. Today, I think everybody was probably on a different planet. I, myself, for sure was. Um, you know, and often we read Parashat Bereshit right after Sukkot. I think last year was like that, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. So we don't get the chance to th- think and, and talk about this parasha. And probably worse than that is we think of Parashat Bereshit as the kindergarten parasha. It's the six days of creation. On day one, God created this. On day two, God created this. And so on and so forth. On the seventh day, he rested. You have Adam and Chava. You have Cain and Hevel. You have all these stories. The snake. And the kindergarten parasha. But in reality, there is so much more that meets the eye in each one of these stories. We can spend an entire year talking about the stories found in Parashat Bereshit. And that probably wouldn't be enough. How many books were written on the six days of creation? How many theories have there been by theorists that think that they knew what happened during creation? Big Bang Theory, dinosaurs, you've heard it all. How many questions have been asked? Achachamim tell us that in the word Bereshit alone, you can find hints to all 613 mitzvot, just in the word Bereshit. There was once a guy who wanted to test this out. Smart Alec. So he went up to the Vilna Gaon, the Gra, and uh, he told him, where can you find the mitzvah of Pidyon HaBen? The mitzvah of sanctifying a firstborn boy after 30 days. Where can you find this mitzvah in, in the word Bereshit? So the Vilna Gaon told him, Ah, that Pidyona Ben, that's an easy one. Bereshit. Ben Rishon, Achar Sheloshim, Yom Tipadeh. That's Bereshit. Your first boy, after 30 days you redeem. All in the word Bereshit. So then a person asked, Can you learn history from the word Bereshit? And he told him, Yeah, of course you can. Bereshit. Tana Eloki, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Bara beno Rabbi el So Bereshit Bara spell out Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the famous Tana, the holy Tana, and Bara beno Rabbi el his son Rabbi el Maybe we'll get back to this word Bereshit at the end. But tonight, I want to talk about a subject that really is well known to us, everybody in this room. Yet it's a subject that no matter where you're holding in your religion, there is room to improve in. This is the subject of Shabbat. As you know, this is the parasha where we are first introduced to Shabbat. As Hashem rested on the seventh day after creating the world. Shabbat is the only day of the year that we greet it when it begins. And we escort it when it leaves. No other Yom Tov receives this uh, this honor. In fact, we even address Shabbat like a person. We say, Boi kala Shabbat Malketa. We refer to Shabbat as a queen. Shabbat Malketa. The Midrash in Bereshit Rabbah says that Shabbat, this person, said to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and said, God, like, it's not fair. All the days of the week, you gave a mate, you gave a pair. Sunday, as Monday, everyone has their own. Shabbat, I'm left by myself. I got nothing. I got, who, who's going to be my, my pair, my mate? So HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, you have nothing to worry about. Knesset Israel, 
is going to be your mate. The Jewish people, they're going to be the people, the ones that are going to honor you. And that is our job. Our job is to honor the Shabbat, to take care of her. There's even a mitzvah to fear Shabbat. So instead of asking, what is Shabbat? We have to actually ask, who is Shabbat? There's a, there's a strong misconception about Shabbat. The Pasuk says, Ki sheshet yamim asa Hashem et et I think everybody knows this Pasuk. Ki sheshet yamim asa Hashem et What does this Pasuk mean? What does this Pasuk mean? For in six days, HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the heavens and the earth. Right? That's, that, that's how we've learned to translate this Pasuk. God created the world and the heavens and the earth in six days. But if that's true, then that's not what the Pasuk should have written. It shouldn't have written, Ki sheshet yamim asat ha-shamayim et It should have written, Ki be sheshet yamim asat ha-shamayim et For in six days, or through six days, God created the heavens of the earth. What's ki sheshet yamim? The, the, the bet is missing. This is the question of the Or Chaim HaKadosh. To answer this, I'd like to give an analogy through a cell phone. We live in the, in the world of smartphones now. And we all know that the cell phone must be fully charged when you wake up. Because you're not sure if that battery is going to last by the time you go to sleep. In fact, to most of us, it doesn't last. By the time we go to sleep, we have to recharge and recharge. If you don't recharge the phone, the phone will not work. The battery will die. There's no lifelong battery. The Orachim says that God created two elements here. One element was a six-day week. The Shabbat is the battery charger. Meaning, if there was no Shabbat, after six days, the world would stop. Because it has no power, it has no charge to continue further. The Shabbat is what charges the next six days. The world without Shabbat would run out of a bat- would run out of battery. So the question is, okay, this is good, this makes sense. For every Shabbat, or every week following the first Shabbat, right? Yeah, God created the world Sunday to Friday. Friday, he created Adam, Adam, and then he had Shabbat. So now that Shabbat could now charge the next week. What charged the original six days? What charged? What, what, what was the force that gave the original six days? So Chachamim tell us that Hashem decided... The thought process of when he decided to create the world happened on Shabbat. That thought process, that decision of to create the world happened on Shabbat. So Shabbat is actually not the end of the week. Shabbat is the beginning of the week. It preceded everything and it gave the, it gave the power for the world to continue. There is a Probably one of the most famous Jewish songs in the world. I will vouch to say it is the most famous Jewish song in the world. It's a song that we sing every Friday night. Makes no difference if you're Ashkenazi, if you're Sfaradi, if you're Hasidi, if you're Temani. Yeah, yeah, everybody sings this song. <coughs> the Piyut of Lecha Dodi. Lecha Dodi, Likrat Kala, Pene Shabbat Nekabela, was written by Rav Shlomo El Kabetz a Sephardic rabbi who's buried in the city of Sfat. This piyut, this song, <coughs> has been accepted again by Jews around the world. And we sing into multiple tunes. The second stanza of, of the, the song is Likrat Shabbat Lechu Venelcha. Rav Shlomo Kabetz is telling us, Go out and greet the Shabbat, Ki hi mekor ha for that is the wellspring of blessing. Meros mi kedem nesucha, from the beginning, from of old, nesucha, it was ordained, sof maase be machashaba techila. Last in uh, production, maase be machashaba techila, but first in thought. What's meros mi kedem nesucha? From the beginning, 
Mikedem, from old. What does this mean? So I heard an amazing Chidush. There are six days of the working week. How many hours are there in six, day, in six days? So this is very simple arithmetic. 144. Six times 24 is 144. Says Rav Shlomo El Kabetz, Shabbat is Rosh Mi Kedim. It, advanced, it advances the Kedim. It is at the head of Kedim. What's the gematri of Kedim? 144. Shabbat was, it preceded the six days. So what we think that Shabbat only came after the six days, which it did, and that's when he rested, but the thought process behind it was HaKadosh Baruch Hu before the creation, what happened on Shabbat. Kedem, 144. When did Shabbat, when did Hashem make this decision on Shabbat? When? Was it Friday night, Shabbat morning? So the Mekubalim say that He made this decision on Shabbat afternoon, during the time of Mincha. And this is strange, because uh, normally the time of Mincha is a time of strict judgment. It's a time of deen. How do I know this? Because the individual that was metaken, that instituted the, the tefillah of Mincha, was Yitzchak. Yitzchak tiken tefillah Mincha, says the Gemara in Masech Brachot, fourth parak. But it says, Yitzchak lasuach basadeh. And Yitzchak represented Din. Yitzchak was a very... Uh, I remember Rabbi Azulai talked about this a little bit on Sukkot. Yitzchak represents strict judgment. Mincha, the afternoon, is a time where the sun begins to set. Where things uh, uh, begin to darken. And things... And it can represent life as beginning to look a little bit bleak. Things are not looking good. Strict judgment. It's scary. It's a scary time. Why is it starting to get dark? That is true for a normal day of the week. But on Shabbat, it's different. The light and the kedusha of Shabbat sparks and lights at its brightest force on Shabbat afternoon, during the time of Mincha. That's when it peaks. The reason is because that's the time that Hashem decided He was going to create the world. So what ends up being is that Mincha of Shabbat is the most opportune time to pray for anything. The, what, the, that tefillah of Mincha is a tremendous time. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is listening because there's so much chesed in the world that's coming. What bigger chesed can there be that, than creating the world? Without that, we got nothing. So last week, I, was, I took my children on a Chol Amoed trip to a farm. Because that's what was available to go on Chol Moed. And uh, I had my, my little ones in the car. So they were having a good time on their own. And I decided, and I'm going to listen to a shiur. So I put in a shiur from Rabbi Mansur. I had 45-minute drive, 45-minute shiur, beautiful. And I heard a great, great chidush from Rabbi Mansur. He says, if you look at the parasha of Shabbat in this week's parasha, when you say this during Kiddush, three times in this parasha is the word Yom HaShevi'i. Three times. Again, and then, very, very uncommon for the Torah to repeat something like this. So why is there the word three times Yom HaShivi? So he says the three times Yom HaShivi is referring to three different Shabbatot that would take place from the beginning of the world to the end. The first Yom HaShivi was Shabbat, Be- Shabbat Bereshit, the first ever Shabbat, day number seven. The second one was Shabbat Matan Torah. When the Jews received the Torah on Mount Sinai, that was also Shabbat. And the third one is the Shabbat of Biat HaMashiach. Shabbat of Mashiach will come. Interesting, he says, that every tefillah on Shabbat corresponds to each one of those special Shabbatot. 
the tefillah of Arvit will correspond to Shabbat Maaseh Bereshit, as we say, Ata kidashta et yom hashevi'i leshimcha, you sanctified Shabbat in your name, tachlit maaseh shamayim ba'aretz. So we see a direct reference to the creation of the world on Arvit, because that's the first Shabbat, the Shabbat of creation. So now, Shachrit is the second Shabbat. You would think that it has to do something with Har Sinai, with Mount Sinai, and the giving of the Torah. Those that are familiar with the Tefillah will know that after the Bracha Vatakadosh, we say, Yismach Moshe Bematenat Chelko. So we see a direct reference to Har Sinai, Moshe Rabbeinu taking the tablets. Which is the one of, of Mincha? Which is the Tefillah of Mincha? The Shabbat of Mashiach. Where we say, Ata Echad Veshimcha Echad. What does Ata Echad Veshimcha Echad have to do with Shabbat? Okay, I understand. I'm, I'm taking that away. Yes, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is one and his name is one. But what does that have to do with Shabbat? What's the Shabbat of Mashiach? How is it the Shabbat of Mashiach? Because it's only the, when Mashiach comes that her name is, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's name is going to be full. Ve'haya bayom ha'hu. On that day, on the day of Mashiach, Yiyeh Hashem Echad Ushmo Echad. This is what we say every day. Bayom ha'hu, on that day, the day when, when Mashiach comes, that's when God's name will be full. And that's why we say, Atar Echad v'Shimcha Echad. So now that we, now that we have now a, a bit, bit of a broader background on Shabbat, I want to talk about two special things that I think we can improve on. And when I say we, I certainly include myself, which are a little bit outside the realm of the typical 39 melachot that we're not allowed to do on Shabbat. We have a prohibition. We have an isur that the pasuk in the Navi says, Mi davar. <coughs> Specifically, vedaber davar. The Gemara in Masechet Shabbat, the Fyut Bet says, that mi daber davar, we learn that a person cannot speak on Shabbat the way that he would speak during the week. His type of speech has to be different. In fact, Tosvot on the page says that it doesn't mean that the type of speech should be different. He says even if you were to speak permitted matters, you shouldn't speak as much on Shabbat as you do during the week. In the Yerushalmi, there's a story of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's mother who would speak a lot on Shabbat, and when he commented to her that today was Shabbat, she would immediately be quiet. Ta'ani dibur. She would, that's it. No more talking. Shabbat, you have to watch what we say. And we're talking about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's mother. But more than vedaber davar, than watch what we speak, it also applies to what we read. There's a halakha that says that we're not allowed to read shtare hediotot, which include documents of debt, financial accounts, letters between friends, magazines, newspapers, flyers from the mail, oh, Coke's on sale at No Frills, or Kosher City. It all, it includes, and, and not necessarily just politics, or news articles, or sports articles, which you may think is allowed. And even if a person is interested in reading about politics and news, Will he do it in a shul? Will a person, chas Shalom, bring in a Toronto star or a Toronto sun into the Bet Knesset and start reading it in shul? I, I think everybody here would have a problem with that if that was to happen. Surely not, because the synagogue is a Bet Hashem. It's not fitting to read this stuff or this, this material there. That's stuff you do at a coffee shop. That's what you do at a, at a street vendor. If a person's in the middle of his Amidah, will he pause to read a newspaper, to read a magazine, to see what the score was in the Blue Jay game? It doesn't fit the day to read the newspaper, to talk about finances, or about other meaningless topics. So why do we do it? Why do we do it? And again, I speak for myself as well. Why, why are our Shabbat tables filled with this type of talk, why is it not filled with divret Torah? 
Why do we focus on politics of the synagogue, politics of the schools, politics of the communities? Why does that override the words of wisdom? Why does that overtake the 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 the, the Torah from our children, what they learned in school? Is the stock market that important? I know we're all in blue jay fever, but is that really what counts? Why can't we why can't that wait till Sunday? Can't wait till till you know you got a few hours. Keep it for the weekday. In fact, the Pasuk says Shabbat Shabbaton. Shabbat Shabbaton. The Zohar is the double lashon. Shabbat Shabbaton. Why Shabbat Shabbaton? Says the Zohar as follows. Amazing. Balomar Leisu Shabbat Balomar Leisur Melacha. The word Shabbat comes to teach me that I have certain types of work that are prohibited. I'm not allowed to do certain work. That's what Shabbat means. Shabbaton Leisur Dibur. Shabbaton comes to teach me that I need to watch what I say on Shabbat. I have to take care of the. Uh, and we're not talking now, that, that's, not, that's not the issue. We're talking about permitted matters. What would be permitted during the week to talk? God forbid, you can never speak Lashon Hara. No, weekday or Shabbat. Here we're talking about permitted matters. Shabbaton leisur dibur. The Gemara in Masechet Shabbat also says, Shebekoshi hitiru lenachem avel beShabbat. That only with, it was with hardship that they allowed to go uh, and, and comfort the mourner on Shabbat. Because they knew that that, you know, they, they knew that although he would be a little bit happy that people will come, but on the other hand, they know that what he's saying is going to make the person feel bad. It's not easy. It's not easy. And there's, till today, many communities that don't go and be Menachem Avelim on Shabbat. There's a song, I think it's called Mekadesh Shevi'i is the name of the song. And one of the lines of the song says, Azor la shovtim b'shevi'i b'harish. When we just finished Shemitah year, we just finished a year in Eretz Yisrael where, where Rabbi Ezra mentioned over 3,000 Jews, farmers, chose not to work on their, on their, uh, on their land. It's a tremendous statistic. Azor la shovtim, we're asking Hashem, help those people as, that, that were shovet, that seized from working on the Shevi'i, on the seventh year, Becharish, on their plowing. We're asking Hashem, provide extra for them, because listen, they had faith in you. Achachamim or Meramez, they, 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 play, uh, they play something on the words, and he says, don't read it, Azor la Shoftim b'Shevi Becharish, read it, La'elu ha-Shoftim b'Yom ha-Shevi, to those people who seized on the seventh day, Becharish, Lashon Cheresh, Shetika, Cheresh is a deaf person, a person that can't hear, the person that watched the way that they spoke, the person that was Kharish, he, 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 he was mute, so to speak. Well, Kharish means a deaf person, but if you're deaf, that means you can't hear. The, the, the talking was limited. Beshetika. That's the person who you should help out, Hashem. That's who you should give the beracha to. The guy who watched what he spoke on Shabbat. Shelo yehe dibrucha shel Shabbat ke dibrucha kechol. That your, your, your type of talk on Shabbat should not be the way it is during the weekday. The Brisker Rav also wrote something astounding on Shabbat, especially about Kabbalat Shabbat. He said, Kabbalat Shabbat, the, the uh, receiving of Shabbat, the Shabbat reception, he says that Kabbalat Shabbat is similar to what happened on Mount Sinai. He explains that there are three halachot of Kabbalat Shabbat that resemble three instructions that the Jewish people got uh, when they received God's presence on Har Sinai. If you read through Parashat Yitro, there are three instructions. Instruction number one is that before they were to get the Torah, they had to wash their clothes, wash their garments. Number two, they had to be ready. They had to be ready. They had to be ready for the third day. Get yourself ready. And the third instruction, Moshe had to bring the people to greet God. It wasn't God who was going to come to them. They had to go greet. Says the Brisker Rav that these three instructions apply to Kabbalat Shabbat as well. The first one is to wear nice clothing. Now men actually adhere to this halakha very well. 
because they're usually dressed when Shabbat comes. So they, they have to go make their way to synagogue. So they're ready. But it's important for the women to know this halakha as well. Often a woman is dressed in her weekday clothes when she lights the candles. Or maybe even worse, pajamas or something. Dress pants. I've seen cases where women come to the Shabbat table dressed in pajamas. That's wrong. The Shekhinah is on its way before Shabbat begins. It's on its way. We need to be ready for it. When you're lighting candles, you need to be dressed for Shabbat as if you're going to shul. Abba, I'm not going to shul. doesn't matter. You wouldn't dress like that if you were going to a wedding. And certainly Shabbat is coming. HaKadosh Baruch who's entering your home. You need to be dressed the way Shabbat is meant to, uh, to, 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 to be dressed for. The second halakha, and they shall be ready for the third day. Which means that you can't be busy when Shabbat arrives. Now this is something that's very difficult. Difficult for us, especially in North America. Something that men also need to take into consideration. Many men use the last moments before Shabbat to take care of last minute details. They send emails. They check their social accounts. They check their bank accounts. Some justify themselves and they say, no, I was putting something mukse away. I was moving my cell phone back and thing. Well, yeah, you have to do that. But why wasn't that done before? That's not the proper way. You should be sitting waiting for Shabbat to arrive. The Rambam writes in his halakha that when I quote in English, one should be sitting respectfully and looking forward to greeting the Shabbat as one would go greet a king. If you had a visitation with the Prime Minister of Canada, you would be there two hours in advance in your suit and your tie sitting in front of his office. You don't take a chance with the Prime Minister. And the third halakha is to go out and greet Shabbat. The Rambam also writes that the earlier sages would gather their Talmidim on Arab Shabbat, his students, their students, wear their clothes, and, and they're going to say, le, uh, 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 go out and greet. Go out, we're going to go out and we're going to greet Shabbat the king. Our generation is not used to this. We go out in the streets, we don't find Shabbat. We find traffic jams. Why? Because we're late for shul. We find stores that run out of food. Because we procrastinated. One of the interpretations of Zachor et Yom HaShabbat Kadesho, remember the Shabbat to sanctify it, one of the Ten Commandments, is that Shabbat should be on our minds every single day of the week. That's why we read, that's why we preface every Mizmor of the day with Hayom, Yom Shalishi Shabbat Kodesh. We're constantly remembering Shabbat. The Gemara goes into great depth on how Hillel and Shammai, how they would do their weekly shopping. Every time they would go to the market, they would see an animal and go, yeah, that one's for Shabbat. Did the next day they saw another animal? Better? Go, no, 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 I'm pushing that one aside. I'm getting that one for Shabbat. This is what they're thinking about on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday. Every day they're thinking about Shabbat. How many times have you realized you're missing an ingredient for a day? It's 30 minutes prior to Shabbat. Oh my God, I don't have it. Go, go, take the car quick. You still have 30 minutes. Add the 18 minutes. You got, you got 48 minutes. You can do it. Trust me. Ah, but rush hour. Now I gotta do it. Just do it. Go. Come on. You can do it. Yalla. Why does this happen? Rav Shimshun uh, Pinkis, Zecher Tzadik Libracha, gives a great analogy. He says, imagine on, on Pesach, or before Pesach, someone needs to buy his matzah for Pesach. So, he realized, it's end of Pesach, he still hasn't bought his matzah. Guy's going crazy. Goes from store to store to store. He finally finds a store that has matzah. He finally buys it. Aha, he's happy. The matzot, the matzot have feelings. The matzot don't have feelings. Matzot aren't embarrassed that, he was, that, that they were just bought in the nick of time. Well, imagine the following scenario. Imagine the ser- scenario that your parents are coming from out of town. And they're coming to spend Shabbat with you. They're coming to visit, to see you. So they take the train in. And they come to the train expecting to see one of their kids or their grandkids pick them up. Nobody's there. Nobody's there to pick him up. Calls up the grandson. Swear, therefore, where are you? Oh, Saba. Oh, you know what? I was caught up in something in a meeting. I, I can't get. You know what? You know, you, take a cab. I'll cover it. Here, take the cab. Go, go, go. I go. Okay, fine. You know, maybe he was busy. Was busy. So they take the cab. They go. They walk, knock on the door. They walk into the house. They don't see anybody. Nobody's there. One of them's in the shower, right? One of them's getting dressed. One of them is. 
Knock on hello, anybody home? Anybody home? We're here, we're here. Look, look, we're here. Oh, hi, from far are you here? God, just make yourself at home. We'll, we'll see you at the meal. We'll see you at the meal. We're just getting things ready now. We, you know, just sit down, make yourself comfortable. How are these parents going to feel? These parents going to want to come back. They're going to say, what do I need to come here for? I, you know, no one greets me. You know, I travel all the way here. They're all ready. They're all pushing me aside. One of the reasons we don't feel the holiness of Shabbat is because we don't know how to <coughs> greet her. We don't give her the respect she deserves. There's, if you read the Pasuk, we read, the Pasuk says, La asot et Shabbat le Dorotam. La asot et Shabbat le Dorotam. The word Dorotam is spelled without a vav. Spelled Lamed Dalid Reish Taf Mem. It should be spelled Lamesh Dalid Vav Reish Taf Mem. There's no Vav. So the Yalkut Reuveni says as follows. Le Dorotam Katuv Chaser Vav. It's written without a Vav. Why? Efshar Likroto Le Diratam. Because if you don't put, if you leave a Vav out, you could read the word Le Diratam, which means your dwellings. You have to make Shabbat for your dwellings. And he writes, Shebesha'a shenichneset Shabbat at the time that Shabbat comes in, Tzarich shetiye dirato shel adam Yisrael muchana lekach. Your house needs to be ready when Shabbat comes in. Shulchan aruch, your table set. Nerdolek, candlelit, mita mutzat, bed made. Velo shetikane Shabbat kasher en hadira mesuderet. And not that Shabbat comes in, table's not set, something's still on the stove, I still got 18 minutes, I still got 18 minutes. You're not dressed, you're in pajamas, you didn't blow dry your hair. That's why it's missing without the vav, it's written without the vav, because we have to read le diratam. So last night after Simchat Torah, I came home, and I was, needed to touch up the speech, and I said, I need to, I need to find a story. And there's got to be, I, I got to find something. Because I needed uh, something to drive the point home. And Bisiata Di Shmaya, the first place you look has got to be Rabbi Krohn's books. So thank God I have a few of volumes. And the second story I found on his, on his index on Shabbat, wow. Siata Di Shmaya, nothing else. Rabbi Yitzchak Zilberstein, this is coming from his book, uh, Reflections of the Magid. So Rabbi Yitzchak Zilberstein is a big posseic in Bnei Brak. He is the son-in-law of Rabbi Yashiv. And the story goes, he repeated a story by this Rabbi Simcha Kaplan, who was a, a rabbi in, a, in, a, in the city of Sfat. And Rabbi Kaplan said, repeating the story, when he was a young man studying in the Mir Yeshiva in Poland, they would rent rooms, right? That's the way they did. They rent rooms and they would eat meals with other families around the city. And one Friday morning, he heard the landlady of where he was renting his room from say to her husband, are you going out to the next town to buy stuff for Shabbat? This was Friday morning. And the husband said, yeah, yeah, I'm going. So she told him, well, make sure you come back before Hatzot. Make sure you come back before midday. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, roughly about there. Take care of everything you need to be done. You know how important it is. So Rabbi Simcha, he was listening to this, he goes, this doesn't make sense, you know, this town wasn't really a town, it was like you know, 20 minutes away, 30 minutes away, it wasn't like a big schlep. Why was she so worried? Why, why, why did he have to be back by midday? And what made him more amazed was that as the time was coming closer to Chatzot, this landlady was standing by the window looking out for the husband, worried, anxious, is he going to come before Chatzot? So he, had, he couldn't hold himself back. And he said, he asked the lady, why are you so concerned? You know, your husband is a, is a religious guy. You know, the, the city's not far away. He's going to come back before Shabbat. What's the, what's the big deal? So the woman told him, goes, I got to tell you a story. He says, for many years, my husband and I couldn't have a child. And their lives obviously was, uh, were saddened. They finally had a son, the only son they ever had. But when he was young, he was very sick. He got very sick. And 
They took him to a doctor, many doctors. None of them could help the son. The one, then they took the son to Vienna, to Austria. Specialists, yeah? The, the, the top doctors. All these professors and their theories, none had a, 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 a cure. In fact, the general consensus said that the, guy, the, kid, the boy's days are numbered. So she was crying on the streets of Vienna and started to make her way back to the city of Mir. And a Jew saw her. What's wrong? He said, ah, I just told him the story. My son's sick. No one, can, no one can help him. I don't have no cure. I'm on my way back to Mir. So the, the, the Jew said to Lee, listen, if you're on your way back to Mir, go stop in the city of Radin, where lives the Chafetz Chaim. Go there, give you a beracha. You never know. So she got excited. A little hope, a little something sparked. I'm going to go see the Chafetz Chaim, you know, something. So she was ready to try anything. She goes to see the great city, the Chafetz Chaim. At this time, Chafetz Chaim was very old. In fact, his Shamashim were keeping people outside of the house. But she cried and she poured her heart, please, please, I need to speak to him, I need to speak to him. So she told him the story. The Chafetz Chaim said, listen, what can I do? I'm an old man. When I was young, I used to have the koach to fast for sick people for Klal Yisrael. He goes, he goes, I can't do that anymore. I can't fast for your son. The woman, that's it, burst into tears, couldn't believe it. The, her last hope with the Chafetz Chaim just flew away. So a family member then whispered into the Chafetz Chaim, which he claims that she heard that it was, he told the Chafetz Chaim, this is her only son. What can you do? Help her. When hearing this, the Chafetz Chaim stood up and said firmly, I'm going to give you two resolutions. And if you accept them both, I guarantee you that your son will have a full recovery. Whatever you want. Rabbi, tell me. Whatever it is. He said, number one, the moment you light Shabbat candles, not you or any member of your house can do any melacha. Done. Everybody must stop at that moment when you light Shabbat candles. Deal. What's next? He says, number two, you must put the candelabra and you must set the Shabbat table before Chatzot on Friday. Before midday. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, roughly around that time. And if you do that, your son will heal. And the woman finished her story and says, of course, my husband and I accepted those conditions. And within a short time, our son was healed. From the segula of having your house ready, not last minute, it has to be ready. And the doctors of Vienna couldn't believe it, she said. And that's why I'm anxious. And that's why I'm standing by the window. I'm waiting for him to come. But I know he's going to come on time. Usmartem et ha-shabbat ki kodeshi lachem. The Pesach Kron says, Usmartem et ha-shabbat means you have to observe the Shabbat. But the word shemor shabbat, observing the word shamor, has a, diff- can, can be, uh, has a different connotation, has a different meaning sometimes. It also means to wait for, to anticipate. Ushmartem et Shabbat, you have to wait for it. You have to be there ready for it. When Yaakov heard Yosef's dream of supremacy over his brothers, the Torah says, Ve'aviv shamar et ha-davar. What does it mean, shamar et ha-davar? Yaakov knew what was going to happen. He didn't say anything when Yosef said the dream because he knew he was anticipating. This is it. Shabbat, he kept it in the back of his mind. Shabbat, ushmartem et Shabbat, you have to wait for it. And that is what ushmartem et Shabbat is. And the Arucha Shuchan even takes this a step further. And he says that the Satan, the Satan is the Yetzer Ara, the evil inclination, the Satan in modern day English, vigorously attempts to cause problems and disharmony on the home on Erev Shabbat. <coughs> Heard Rabbi Abudi talk about this many times over here. So that people will not enter Shabbat in the proper frame of mind. I bet you everyone in this room can testify that in their house on Friday afternoon, it is a zoo, it is chaos, it is everyone, one is screaming at this person, this daughter is screaming at this daughter, they're closed, not ready, not dry, not washed, not this. What's going on here? Why is it always the same time? Why is that those two hours, three hours before Shabbat, constantly a ruckus, 
constantly a zoo. The answer is, that's the Satan doing this. He's trying to mess it all up. Why does he focus so much on that time? Why at that period? Because he was already successful at that time. It was on the sixth day of creation. It was on Erev Shabbat that the Satan successfully caused Adam to sin. Chabat to sin. So he says, I already beat you once on this day. And I'm going to try. I know that Shabbat is the charge for the next week. I'm going to try to mess it up right now. <laughs> Says the Chafetz Chaim, you got to be ready before Hatzot. Rav Yaakov Kamenesky was famously quoted in saying, In America, we gained Shabbat, but we lost Erev Shabbat. Meaning what? In America, thankfully, we don't, we're not faced with the choice of working on Shabbat or losing our jobs, because that's the way it was in Europe. You either worked or you lost your job. Thankfully, they understand now. We're in America, we have weekends. Very few people work on Shabbat and Sunday. But we lost Erev Shabbat because of our hectic lifestyle, because of, of multiple obligations that keep us occupied right to the end until the very last minute. And says the Chafetz Chaim, it's that hectic uh, pace that ruins our Shabbat. And having the table set from before, it creates the atmosphere. It tells us that we're ready. It tells us that we're ready to accept you, to greet you. We're going to go out. Lechu v'nelcha, you go out and greet Shabbat. Not that Shabbat's coming to you, you have to be ready. So let's recap. We understand that Shabbat is the power generator for our week. It's the time where we find the most chesed brought down upon us. Anything we want to pray for, Shabbat Mincha, is the most opportune time. For this, we need to be cautious with the way that we speak on Shabbat and what we speak. Help those people that rest, Becharish, who watch the way they talk, with silence. Be like the mother of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, who minimized her talk. Secondly, Understand the importance of being ready on time. The importance of taking care of the Satan who once succeeded on Erev Shabbat. And all these messages are taught to us in many Pesukim, as I quoted, and many Halachot. But I began this shiur by saying that all the mitzvot are hinted in the word Bereshit. Bereshit, the word Bereshit is the same letters as Yare Shabbat. Fear the Shabbat. Fear Shabbat. From the beginning of a creation, HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to instill the importance of this day. He wouldn't have created... This was, this was before. This was his thought process. From the moment I'm starting, Bereshit, Yare Shabbat, fear Shabbat. Because that's what's going to give you the force to continue on through life. This year is done in memory of my grandfather. And I think it's only proper that I say a few words of his respect for Shabbat. And to start off, my grandfather lived in a city in Tangiers in a time and a place where Shabbat observance was sparse. He was one of the few families that devoted his observance to Shabbat. And it's unfortunate, but many can testify that it wasn't easy. He lived in that time where you either worked or you lost, or you lost your job. How much business did he probably lose because he refused to be open on Shabbat? That's for one. But I chose these two Specific prohibitions. Number one, watching what you speak on Shabbat. Because I believe that my grandfather, this, this meant something to him. And it, it wasn't something that he spoke up often. Like he didn't outright say, don't say that. But I remember many times, <coughs> uh, uh, we would mention to my grandfather on the table something that had nothing to do with Shabbat. Really, nothing to do with Shabbat. Do you know? Okay, 
Kushates, que pasó ahí. Like something that, not total, no a connection to Shabbat. His response, nothing. He never, ever continued that conversation. It was of no interest to him. Because to him, that's not what I'm sitting on this table for. To him, it was, let me hear a piyut. I want to hear a song. What did you learn in school? Tell me, tell me a hidush. That's one. And when we did give him the hidushim, when we sat down and we told him the divret Torah, you had, you had his attention. He was listening to him. But, I, but, but, but any time we brought up these, these mundane matters and worthless things, he could, couldn't care less. Never furthered the conversation. That was one. But more than that was the second one. That my family members can testify that, can attest to the fact that man was he ready for Shabbat. He was sitting there, whether in his house in Montreal, or in my house, in my parents' house, or my aunt's house. He was ready hours in advance. Hours! There was a, you know, we used to walk in, whether for Pesach, or Shabbat, come into Montreal, three hours, two hours early, he sat down, then my grandfather was in his suit, ready with the Sidur. This is three hours before Shabbat. Ready to go. He was going out to greet Shabbat. <laughs> It wasn't something that we were rushing. I remember fondly, many times he was at my parents' house, and my father was doing, like, running some errands, my mother was running some errands, and my grandpa was saying, Ahora es esto. this is the time you have to do this. this, now, this is what you're doing. He was ready. How many times I went to pick him up, you know, in the shul in the morning. Again, he was ready to go. This was something that was important to him. He understood the importance of going out to greet Shabbat. He understood, the, he understood what it meant. He understood the power behind the Shabbat. He used to sit down in his chair. He said, he used to bless everybody who came through. But he was ready to go. And when we were ready, he, unfortunately, we had, to, we had to take him to shul because he needed someone to walk with. But he was waiting for us. And someone was already, was already ready to take him, but he was ready. He, we never, ever had to wait for him. Ever. So, as we... Uh, come to embark on Shabbat Bereshit, the Shabbat where God uh, instructs us to keep Shabbat, I think it's important that we, we, we take this message home. These things are not difficult, they are not, are not easy, sorry. You know, we live in a society, especially during the winter, where it's very hard to get things done on time. And we're always rushing. But we got to make an effort not to keep it for the last minute. Because it just causes ruckus, it causes stress, it causes anger, it causes yells, and then the satan is winning. And my grandfather, who had very difficult, had, had much difficulty moving around the house, was able to get ready in time. Then we can get ready. We have no issues. We can do it. So bezrat Hashem, these two things in mind: watching the way we speak on Shabbat. And again, we're not talking about isur, isurim, things that we shouldn't be talking anyways. We're talking about permitted things. It's not the right time. Let's try to put an effort on what we speak, speak the proper things. Try to find time on your table to say some divret Torah, even if it's a few minutes. I, I tried, you know, what, what, what did you learn in school? Something basic. Even if it's as simple as Bereshit. But we see Bereshit, even Bereshit is not so simple. Everything is found in there. And more importantly, let's be ready. Let's be like the, like the Chafetz Chaim says. We, we set the table. We put the candelabra. It's ready to go. And we go out. לכו שבת לכו ונלכה, לקראת שבת לכו ונלכה, כי היא מקור הברכה. That is the source of blessing. בעזרת השם, we shall be blessed, all of us, with many, many great things, through the observance of Shabbat. Amen. כן יהי רצון. לבי חניה בן הקשה אומר, רצה הקדוש ברוך הוא זגוי סרפיך, אך ילבא להם תור מצוות. שנאמר, אדוני חפת, למען שיקרו ידיר תורה וידיר. Amen. 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 Amen.